Hi, welcome to the Abacet Math video series on Diophantine equations, often called integer equations for reasons that will become clear in a minute. Now, integer equations were studied extensively by the Greek mathematician Diophantus, and thus the name, and they were also studied by more familiar Greek math icons such as Euclid, Pythagoras, and Archimedes, to name a few. And these integer constrained equations were more natural in a way, I think, to the Greeks because the concept of continuous numbers such as real and rational numbers were relatively new at the time. Now in high school mathematics, algebraic solutions in real numbers are far more common, but you know, as we'll see, these integer solutions can be quite useful. So let's jump right in and look at some prototype examples of the kinds of integer equations we'll be working with in this uh, video series. And the first uh, category of equations I like to describe as factorable. And the first prototype example is an equation of the type, for example, uh, xy plus 2x plus 3y is equal to 9. And in this case, we're trying to solve for x and y in the elements of integers which we denote by this script Z. And it's important to point out that it's this requirement here that classifies this equation as a Diophantine or an integer equation. The equation itself is, is quite uh, ordinary and probably comes up in many contexts, but it's the constraint that we place on the variables X and Y, in this case to be elements of integers, that uh, classifies this as a Diophantine or an integer equation. Now, more often than not, uh, we're actually trying to solve for x and y in positive integers, so sometimes we put a little plus sign in front of the z to denote that. Now, in order of increasing difficulty, I would say the next uh, category of equation is what I like to describe as the linear two-variable equation. And that's an equation of the form, for example, 2x plus 3y is equal to 13. Now, when you first see this example equation, uh, the first question that comes to mind is, well, this equation doesn't seem any more difficult than the first equation. In fact, it looks a little bit more simple. And the reason for that is, is pretty clear, uh, it turns out, because the factorable equation is uh, amenable to a factoring method whereby we can take the product of these two coefficients, 2 times 3, add it to both sides of the equation, and now the terms on the left can be factored into a very useful form, in this case x plus 3 times y plus 2 is equal to 15, and we can break down the 15 into its prime factors, 3 times 5, and uh, apply the fundamental theorem of arithmetic to compare the integer factors on the left to the integer factors on the right, and in this case arrive at a unique solution for x and y. But in general, we could at least limit the number of possible solutions to a small and manageable set. And it turns out that this linear two-variable equation is inherently unfactorable and requires some other methods to, of uh, solution that we'll discuss more in, in the coming videos. And the third and uh, uh, final category of equation that we'll cover in this video series, I like to describe as the uh, Pythagoras type. And it basically stems from the Pythagoras relationship of x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. And here we're trying to solve for x, y, and z uh, in the elements of positive integers. Now, you've come across this equation before. It's basically the uh, Pythagoras uh, equation, which relates the two sides of a right triangle to its hypotenuse. And as we know from that, uh, there are some integer solutions to this which are quite convenient. Uh, the most common is the 3, 4, 5 right triangle, and probably the next most common is the 5, 12, 13 right triangle, and there are many more. And uh, the final equation form that I'd like to just mention, we're not going to talk about this in any great detail, is what's called an elliptic equation. And it's of the form, for example, y squared equals x cubed minus 7x plus 5, where we're trying to solve again for x and y in the elements of integers. 
And often, this type of equation, we try to extend the solutions in the set of uh, rational numbers, which we denote by the script Q. And I just mentioned this equation type just to, uh, as a reference point, because uh, just a small change in this equation from previous equations, where we create an x cubed term instead of an x squared term, uh, makes this equation far, far more difficult than any of the previous equations. And I just point that out because uh, it doesn't take much in uh, these types of Diophantine equations to create, uh, to go from equations which are reasonably uh, solvable to equations which are very, very difficult to solve. It doesn't take much in the way of extra exponents or slightly more complicated form to make these equations quite difficult. So I just want to point that out as a reference point. Now, the places where you'll likely see these types of equations, uh, the factorable equation, that's certainly the most favorite form of equation in the AMC 10 and 12 type of uh, test exams. Uh, the linear two-variable equation is something you would see in the AMC 12, perhaps, but it's more likely to show up in the AIM level of testing. And the Pythagoras relationship and the mathematics involved in generating the Pythagorean triples is something that's more likely to occur in the U.S. AMO level of testing. And if this whole high school uh, math experience is somewhat boring and you want to skip on to something more challenging, uh, if you were to come up with some efficient solutions for the elliptic equation, you could pretty much skip your high school and college career altogether and just go ahead and collect your PhD. It's that difficult an equation to solve. So with that uh, preview of uh, upcoming videos, uh, I just want to mention that uh, it turns out that uh, we're going to have to tackle each of these equation types with their own set of methods. And, and while they share some common features, there is no general set of techniques for arriving at integer solutions like there is for, for solving algebraic equations in the set of real numbers. So we'll have to tackle each of these um, on a case-by-case -case basis, and we'll do that in the videos and PDF files to follow. The techniques are fairly simple and don't require much more than an Algebra 1 background, and I hope you'll join us for that. Until then, take care.